Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we'll be talking about the idea of the surface of a revolution. Way back in Calculus 2, we already talked about the volume of a revolution, which happens when we rotate a curve around a particular axis. So in this case, we're going to be doing a similar thing, but we're going to be doing surface area, which is when we rotate a curve around a line. So there's nothing really much to it. So a surface, so surface of revolution. By definition, occurs when we rotate a curve about a line. So that's basically all there is to it to for the definition. So let's just write down the formula for rotating about the x-axis and the y-axis. So rotation about X axis, and there's actually two ways to write the formula, so I'll do I'll do both. So let me just go ahead and underline that. Okay, so the surface area in this case, which I'm going to denote as S, is going to be integral from e to b of two pi times y times the square root of one plus dy over dx all squared times dx. Here, I'm assuming that y equals f of x, and a is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to b. So x is between a and b. Okay, now there's a very similar formula if the function is a function of y instead of x. So in this case, the surface area is going to be the integral from c to d of, so I'm just picking different variables here, or constants here, so that's fine. So it's going to be 2 pi times y square root of 1 plus dx over dy all square times dy. And in this case, I'm assuming that x is a function of y. So x is equal to g of y. And then c is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to d. Okay, so there's one more formula for the rotation about the y-axis, which is similar, very similar to this one. So I'm just going to copy paste the one for the x-axis because the formulas are extremely similar to each other. So let's go ahead and do this right now. If this thing cooperates. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this time we're going to be rotating this around the y-axis. So the only difference is in this case that we're going to have 2 pi times x times 1 plus dy over dx all squared. And then same thing, but we're going to have an x here. So this is kind of the only difference per se, but otherwise the formulas are almost exactly the same. So the only difference between the two functions are just we have an x and we have a y in the other one. So that's basically it. So nothing particularly special about this. There's one more formula for the parametric surface, but we're going to talk about that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and do an example of this. So find the area of a surface, of the surface rather, okay, obtained by the following. So by rotating the curve y equals x squared plus 2 over 3 to the 3 over 2 on the boundary points from 0 to 1 about the y-axis. Okay, how does that work? Well, let's go ahead and write down the formula. So it's going to be 1 plus dy over dx. And then we're going to be scoring that. Okay, so we're going to get 1 plus 3 over 2. So this is me differentiating the, the function. So if we take the derivative of this thing, we'll get 3 over 2 times x squared plus 2 over 3 to the power 1 half times 2x 
to the power of 2, but then the 2's cancel. So we're left with 1 plus 3x square root of x squared plus 2 over 3 to the power of 2. Okay, so now what we can do is the following. So let's go back down a little bit. So if you go ahead and square this thing, we get 1 plus 9x squared times x squared plus 2 over 3. So that's just the square root parking goes away, and then we just get 9x squared, which is the, this thing squared. Okay, so now if you go and expand this thing, we'll get 9x to the power of 4 plus 6x squared plus 1. Okay, but then factoring this, we get 3x squared plus 1 all squared. Okay, so that means s, which is going to be the surface area, is going to be the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 pi times 3x squared plus 1 times dx. But this is very simple. So we get 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of 3x squared plus 1 dx. But then, of course, this is this is just a simple polynomial integral. So if you go and do this integral out, uh, which I'm going to skip because that's really simple, you're going to get 5 pi over 2. And that right there is the integral, or, or the surface root of this function, rather. Okay, so we can talk about parametric curves now. So parametric curves are similar. So rotations for parametric curves. Okay, so let's talk about how to do this one. So in this case, the surface area is going to be the integral from alpha to beta of 2 pi y square root of dx over dt all squared plus dy over dt all squared times dt. But then, of course, here I'm assuming that x is equal to x of t and then y equals y of t. And then I'm assuming that alpha is less than t, which is less than beta. And this is rotation about x-axis, just to be very clear. So rotation about x-axis. Okay, there's a very similar formula for rotation about y-axis, so let's go ahead and do that. So let me just put this all here. Okay, so for rotation of y-axis, we have a very similar formula. So let's give 2 pi x, same thing. And then that right there is the only kind of difference between the two formulas. But otherwise, we can see there's not much to be really say about this one. Okay, so those are two formulas. So let's do an example of this. So find the surface area by rotating uh, x equals 3t squared, y equals 2t cubed, and then 0 less than t, which is less than 5, about the y-axis. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's see. In this case, the surface here is going to be integral from alpha to beta of 2 pi. So in fact, I'm just going to copy the formula. So it's going to be 2 pi, and then it's rotating by the y-axis, so it's going to be this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy paste this formula over. In fact, I can probably erase this because I'm just co copying the whole thing over. Okay, so that right there is going to be our function. So if we go ahead and plug it in, well, we have x, it's 3t squared, and then we can calculate the derivatives as well, very, very simply. So we get the integral of, well, it's going to be 2 pi, integral from 0 to 5 of 3t squared, integral of dx by dt, so it's going to be 6t all squared, plus dy by dt, so it's going to be 6t squared all squared times dt. Okay, 
So let's see, we can factor the six, uh, we could factor the three out. So we get six pi integral from zero to five of t squared. And over here, let's see, we'll get 36 t squared plus 36 t to the four times dt. But then we can take the 36 out because that's the square root of that thing. So that's gonna be six. And then we can take a t squared out from both of these terms. The square root of t squared is t. So we'll get we'll end up getting, let's see, we're gonna get six pi integral from zero to five of six t cubed square root of one plus t squared times dt. Okay, so how do we deal with this? Well, one thing we can do is the following. We can write this as 36 pi integral from zero to five of, let's see, we'll get t times t squared. And there's a very specific reason as to why I'm doing this of one plus t squared. The reason I'm doing that is because the use of the which I'm gonna make right now is gonna make things a little bit easier to work with. Let's see how this works. So I should also mention that this could also be done with a trigonometric substitution, but why use trigonometric substitution when a use substitution would, would, would uh, work as well? So I'm glad u equal to one plus t squared. But then this means that u minus one equals t squared. So du equals two t times dt, which means that by definition, we get one over two times du equals t times dt. Good, we have all of this. So we have u minus one equals t squared, that's here. We have one half d equals to t dt, that's right there. And we made this thing equal to u. Not bad. Okay, so by definition, we can also change our bounds. So the zero is gonna become a one and the five is gonna become a 26 because that's where my u is. So if I plug in zero into this thing, I'll get one. And if I plug in five into this thing, I'll get five squared is 25 plus one, so that's 26. And then the one half is gonna cancel with this 36. So I'm gonna get 18 pi. So I get 18 pi integral from one to 26 of, let's see, u minus one times u to the power of one half times du. So if you do this out, you'll get 18 pi integral from one to 26, u to the three over two minus u to the one over two du. And then if you go ahead and integrate this thing, you'll get 24 pi over five times 949 square root of 26 plus one. And that right there is gonna be our answer. So let's go ahead and box that and we're done. So that was also the last example in this video. So if, any, if you have any questions about any of the examples or any of the concepts you went over, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer. But otherwise, if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll really appreciate it. Thank you all so much and have a great day.